Uh, hello, everybody. Grady Polson here, Family First Life America. Excited to be on here today with my special guest, Zachary Moreno. He himself is a top producer, Hall of Fame, and on track to do Hall of Fame again this year. What's cool about that is he doesn't, he likes to make it tough on himself. So he waited till like the end of the year. Life. And a good portion in a, from a virtual standpoint and some in home and he's run, he's running home hundreds, if not thousands of appointments. And now he's sold hundreds of virtual appointments. And he's going to talk to us today about his, his mindset, his skill set, his structure, and what he does to put himself in place from a lead flow to a, a day-to-day process. And then some in home and virtual sales processes and tips, be able to put up the numbers that he's able to. So without further ado, let's drop a, uh, Let's drop a 92 again in the comments below to welcome our man, uh, Zach Moreno, on the call. How you doing, buddy? Awesome, awesome. Thank you, man. Love the intro. Thank you. Kind of wanted to uh, just real quick start off a little bit more about me, my background. You know, what kind of brought me into this thing? So um, when I started, I had actually uh, got... And can you hear me okay? Just to make sure everything's good? Perfect. Good? Like Awesome. Like like best sound I've ever had on a call. Crystal, awesome, (laughs) awesome, awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I got started in this um, FFL gig actually about two years ago. Um, just came up on the two year mark um, and actually got introduced to it by a guy named Paul Seguin. Um, awesome guy. C- crazy recruiter. So good at recruiting. Um, incredible recruiter and incredible guy. He's, he's obviously uh, done a lot too. So, um, with that, my background, just to kind of talk about before FFL, um, I had actually started with several. I, Dude, right out of high school, um, I mean, really just to give you that background, I mean, right out of high school, like I I didn't know what to do. Like I, I was thinking, you know, do I go to college? Do I do this? Do I do that? Um, and my family, of course, was all like, go to college, go to college. And I honestly, I wanted to go against the grain. I, I always knew, you know, I wasn't the greatest at school. Um, I just wasn't. But my family was always telling me, you know, you need to go to school. You're, you're going to be worthless if you don't, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure we've all heard it, right? Um, and I actually, I went against the grain. Um, I went into sales gigs. Now, the first ones, like, it was it was an experience, right? Um, and actually, right out of tile. So I went into tile first, figured out real fast I am not doing this for the rest of my life. So I got out of that, <laughs> uh, got out of that, and then went into uh, direct TV sales which I actually worked for like a third party company. And what I do is I set up these stands in like Walmart or Target, I'm sure you guys have seen them before. And I'd set it up, you know, bright and early and then end at like 9 p.m. And my goal those days was just to talk to 250 people, talk to as many people as you can and get 250 no's. Like you want 250 no's, okay? So that got me used to no's. Now, after that, um, during that position, I actually, you know, bro- broke some records um, pretty quick, which actually showed me, okay, you're pretty good at sales. Let's see what else is out there, right? Um, they started taking my paycheck, so I was out. Um, I went into solar, um, you know, started door knocking. That was different, uh, definitely different getting your, you know, the door slammed in your face. Um, <laughs> but I got, I got into solar um, and I actually managed the uh, Salt Lake Territory office um, pretty fast too. Um, but then just, you know, what? I was like, dude, I, I don't think I can knock these doors for the rest of my life. So that's when I actually got introduced uh, by someone, um, family, friend of a family member had actually said, hey, have you ever looked into the financial industry? And I was like, no, I haven't. Um, he got me the course. Um, actually, um, excuse me, I paid for the course. Um, and then, <laughs> um, so I paid for the course, got started with this company and, um, you know, I thought it was the best. They, you know, it was my practice company. I'm not going to talk really bad about them because at the end of the day, I still learned something from everywhere I've been. Um, so I actually ended up going to college short time doing Jimmy, <laughs> nothing special. Started doing like part-time Jimmy John's uh, delivery driver <laughs> for a second. I was like, maybe I had to take a step back to, to uh, take a leap forward. So um, I figured out real fast, no, this isn't for me. And that's when I got that call to FFL, introduced me in. And um, that's really it, man. So, so long background, but you know, no, it's, it's. I feel like it all has to be included. So It all does. It all does. I mean, from, from finding some... Uh, resistance and resiliency by standing in Walmart and seeking 250 no's. I mean, that's a very powerful part of your, of, of, of what you went through. I mean, because most people exactly. wouldn't do that. And then, I mean, you're, you're going, I need no's, but no's are going to yield me yeses at some point. I just have to get enough no's because I'm going to fall on a yes. And then all the way towards exactly. finding insurance and then figuring out that you didn't want to be a Jimmy John's driver. And that maybe that well, you did enjoy talking <laughs> to people and helping people and putting them in a, right. in either a sports package or into a good whole life product. So, so yeah, cool, yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. So, so well, give cool, us, man. no, if you've got something to go, I'd love to love for, for you to take away. But yeah. I don't yes. know, like where, 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 um, what's, what's this year yielded for you from a, like bringing on virtual, let's kind of talk about that, maybe transition or what this year has been like for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the transition from last year to this year, I mean, the biggest thing that I, I knew when we, when we started doing this virtual thing, I was like, this is actually a game changer. Like there's, we've got to start doing this. Like I was thinking of ways of doing it before it even hit because I'm like, this just makes sense. Right. And then FFL comes out and they're like, virtual here we go and i'm like yes let's go you know what i mean so um i think the biggest thing with the difference between it is now you're able to go anywhere i mean we've got guys like selling insurance policies in you know jamaica making money while they're on vacation then using jamaica jamaica as a tax write off like i mean it's just like this this business is insane so our own like i've never seen anything like it especially to be able to do it from anywhere i think virtual's um an incredible a game changer mark for all of us. So um, as far as people writing business, it definitely has increased production. Um, I've got guys that literally just sell just from their phone. So it's like, it's 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 game changer. Um, but I wanted to talk about actually Grady, um, a couple things that I think are really important because I get questions all the time. And I think the biggest perspective, now this isn't to really say I'm the best, what I'm trying to say is, it's normal for me, okay? So what we have to understand is we need to make it normal for you. But what I mean by that is mindset. People always ask me, you know, what do you say? How do you do it? You know, all these different things, like they want this perfect recipe. Guys, it doesn't start there, it starts with you. So what I really analyze, Grady, I really reflect on what is my personal life? Because really at the end of the day, how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? So I started reflecting on like, what, what do I do on a day-to-day -day basis? the little things that add up that actually create, you know, the trajectory towards the things that I actually want to see come around. So to change that reality, I also got to change myself. So that's where I realized, okay, let's, let's change these habits and habits that I started incorporating are all about mindset. Like mindset is where it starts. So my big thing, I didn't have a why. Like when I started this business, I had no why in the world. Like I just was doing it to make money and that's all I had. I just wanted to make money. And I will tell you money is such a dead end thing because as soon as you have it, like now that I have it, it's really empty. Like it's not that, like money's great, it's a tool and it's a tool to be used, but it's it's an empty thing if that's all your why is based off of. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna, what's it called, burn out, right? It's gonna burn you out because it's it's never ending. It's a number, right? So what we need to focus on is what do you really want out of this thing? And if it's to grow and give back, that's what changes it, right? So that's what I had to reflect on it. And now I know, you know, obviously my why, I don't have kids yet. So my, you know, that's, that's an easy why for a lot of you, I'm sure. But for me, my why is I want to give back to my mom. I mean, she is an incredible human being and there's no person in the world I'd rather give back to than her. That's my why. Now, knowing your goals, I think is another thing that I think a lot of us don't focus on. We kind of just go week by week, go into it, right? My goals are always set. And I, I will kind of go back into this later on during this thing, but um, really, you got to know your goals. What do you want to hit every week? What do you want to accomplish for that week? You got to already start planning it ahead of time, right? Um, and I actually visualize that. So I'm not just focused on the goal. I'm actually focused on the visualization of that goal. There's actually a study that you guys um, can actually look into that your brain recognizes the same, like it's almost, if you did, if you ran a mile, in person in like the real life versus visualizing it your brain doesn't know the difference it's acting the same so you have to visualize to actually put yourself in the position of already winning to actually be able to, to obtain it so mindset is so crucial and if you're not if you're if you're skipping mindset the rest fall, falls apart i can't tell you how many weeks that you, you know i'm like i can write insurance but i've had weeks that i'm like dude what the heck happened and i reflect i'm like oh my routine my routine was out of whack oh you know i was i was talking negative to myself oh you know these things that like i wanted to put it on someone else like oh you know grady's team must just be better right like i must just not have what grady has and that's the things that you start doing when you're in that negative mindset so you got to change it you got to be positive with the mindset you always got to be visualizing and always make your words super crucial to the point where your mind your subconscious you, whatever you name it believes you 
you got to believe yourself. If you if you don't if you constantly tell yourself I'm going to do something then then don't do it. You're you're telling yourself every time you set a goal, your your subconscious, your your mind, it's all going to be against you. So you got to you got to change those things first, okay? Now, the next thing I really want to talk about Grady is leads. Everyone always asks me, "What leads are you buying? Do you have secret leads?" No. All I'm using is AWL live transfers. I've got mortgage protection. We all know mortgage protection, right? Mailers lock out as many as you can. Um, and then lastly, I'm using instant internet life leads. So those are my three categories that I'm focused on. I used to only do final expense. So anyone that says I don't have the right leads, try working in Utah that really doesn't have that many leads and only on final expense. I still was writing a lot of business. So I always hear he must be in a better area. Oh, you know, th that area must be able to afford more. That's why his AP is so high. It has nothing to do with any of that. So you just need to focus on, make sure you have that lead activity in your favor, whatever avenue you can get your hands on, right? So my three that I picked is instance, I don't do final expense much anymore, mortgage and live transfers, okay? Um, AWL, I like them, um, there's other ones out there too. Date a lot, I've heard good things, just use what you can. Um, now dials, I always, t I always talk to people about dials. Dials is where it all starts, right? Um, the in-home's great. Those things are great, but like you gotta be able to get those appointments. And I was talking to this agent, Wyatt. Um, he's an awesome guy. Um, he's gonna be a killer on the team. So Wyatt, he, he asked me, you know, what what create, like is it activity, is it uh, sacrifice? Like what are the things that you're doing? And I can 100% tell you my activity is always in my favor. So last week I had like 36 appointments. So obviously the activity is in my favor because I had 22 sits so how many of those people no showed me like people complain to me all the time well i'm getting all these no shows dude i get that too like it's not gonna go away you're not gonna get away from it like you can help prevent it but you can't be you can't you can't get away from it right so what i can say is make sure that you always has that have activity in uh your favor that way you can hit those goals now on dial days i'm huge i'm huge on having an accountability partner and this is why i bring wyatt up I told Wyatt I was gonna hit this goal and I didn't wanna let him down. So the second you do that with people, you don't wanna let them down because now it's not only your word, it's also now you're, you're focused on someone else who also is believing you. And if they're looking up to you because you're, there, you're training them and you don't hit your goal, well that says something about you, right? So like I'm always big on, you gotta have an accountability partner because of the fact that in this business it can be lonely and to be lonely, it can easily start, that's when you get in those negative spiral motion mindsets, right? You, because you're all alone. You gotta, you gotta surround yourself by people that look up to you or that you look up to, make sense? Um, now with that as well, tracking numbers, dial days, I track my numbers heavy. Like I, I'm always tracking my numbers. If you guys aren't tracking your data, you, you are, you're setting yourself up to fail. I mean, you're not planning for anything, right? And it's if it's a numbers game, then you better know your numbers, right? So my big thing is I'm always trying to hit those numbers. Now, Grady, you brought up a great point, and I tell this pe I tell this to people all the time. Um, and please comment in if you hear something like just I'm just throwing down, but I want you to comment in too if you hear you, anything. You're throwing. They hear me throw enough. I, I want you to throw all you got. <laughs> okay. Hey, so one one thing you brought up, you said, hey, you get all these no's, right? So Walmart, the job, you know, 250, 250 no's. I tell agents, it's okay. I want you to get no's. I want you to get 100 no's. Like, tell me at the end of the day that you got 100 no's. If you don't tell me you got 100 no's, you're doing something wrong. You have to be okay with no. And so many people are offended by no. And I think that's why when I look back, it's like, that's why I don't judge the places I came from, because what if I didn't do that? Well, maybe I'd be more offended by no's. I did that and it put myself in this uncomfortable position. I can't tell you how many times people told me no or screw off or worse um, in, in Walmart and Target. And it's embarrassing because everyone else around is also hearing that person say that to me, right? But as soon as you get over that and your ego gets the heck out of the way, now it's like, oh, okay, whatever, smile, move on, right? So you got you got to be okay with no's. No's are... I want you to get no's. And that's seriously what I tell agents. I want you to get no's. It's okay to get no's. In fact, if you're not getting them, you're not working. That's just point blank. That's how it's working, okay? Um, script, always have a script. Even me, I still read off a script. And I read off um, a script that I've put together obviously a long time ago. Um, they're all the same. Again, people want to know the perfect script. I don't think there's a perfect script. I think they all work, um, but my script, is do you want me to go over my love, my script on yeah. dials? Okay, 
All right, one sec. Let me pull it up because again, I don't I don't do it without without my script in front of me. Wait, where are you right now? Just what was that? Where are you right now? I'm in uh, Florida right now. Like, so, whose house? Oh <laughs> uh, no, this is this is one of my buddies. Okay, there we go. Work from anywhere. Hold on one sec. Yep, exactly. Hold on one sec. Okay, here we go. Like it's okay, so well I'm gonna do the. I thought it was a very well decorated Airbnb. I'm like, it's yeah, it's it's great, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I put it together. Um, okay, so this this is the script that I'm I'm using. Again, I don't think you need to change your scripts. I'm just gonna be honest. I just don't think you do. Um, and people always want to be on a perfect script, but I just think at the end of the day, as long as you get the activity in your favor, it eliminates all this part. So, with you, Grady. So, hey, Grady. Yeah. Hey, Grady, my name is Zach. Um, I'm actually just getting back to you from the Mortgage Protection Department here in Salt Lake County. Um, and I'm actually just getting back to you in regards to the form you had filled out, sent into my office for information on the mortgage life and disability protection. Does that ring a bell? Uh, who's this again? Say that again. I can't. For some who's this again? Oh, yeah. So this, this is Zach. I'm with the Mortgage Protection Department. You filled out this form. Um, I see that you actually put your date of birth as this. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, perfect. And then most families fill out this request just to make sure that if they die, their home is paid off or to ensure that if they became disabled, the payments are made. Was that what you were thinking? Yeah, that's probably right. Perfect, perfect. So I'm actually the field underwriter that's been assigned to your request. I mean, it's actually just my job to drop off that information to you, um, basically to find out what you can actually qualify for. Now, this is a state approved program, uh, so there is no medical exam required or anything like that, and it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes of your time. Now, with that being said, are you are you currently working right now, or are you retired? I'm retired. Did you say working? Retired. Retired, retired. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So tomorrow I've already got about 10 families to see, but I think I can squeeze you in actually earlier in the day. It looks like I've got either a 10 a.m. or a noon. Which one of those is going to work best for you? Uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Perfect. Okay. So I'll go ahead and put that down. Go ahead and grab a pencil real quick just so you can make a note for me. Let me know when you're ready. Perfect. Okay. Um, so just write this down. My name is Zach, Z A C K. And I've got you down for tomorrow between 10 and 11. I do give myself that hour in between just because I am running from house to house or if I'm setting them up for virtual just because I am servicing members from house to house. It doesn't really matter. Like I'm just, uh, we're just, we want a window. If you don't have a window, you're going to, you're going to mess yourself up. So um, I'm telling him in advance. And then, so I could be as early as 10 or as late as, as late as 11. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, just make sure to let Gene know and then I'll plan on seeing you both there. Okay. Perfect. So that's that's really it, dude. It's really simple. I mean, I think that everyone has a script that's almost identical to that. That's why I'm saying I don't think you need to change it. So field strategy. I wanted to go over this because I think this is crucial. I get asked by agents all the time. What do you do in the field if people um, text you, hey, you know, I, I can't be there. Like I, I got to cancel. Something came up. I have a doctor's appointment. Dude, turn your phone off. Like stop listening to what people say. The biggest buyers that I've had are the people who tell me don't show up. I, I don't know why, but to me, when I hear that, it's a buying sign. So it's a buying signal when someone says no, because guess what? They knew they filled it out. They know they need insurance. They've been waiting forever. And now that they're now that their backs against the wall and they, they're actually someone's coming, of course they're gonna say no, because they're gonna buy it. You see what I'm saying? So it's just, when someone tells me, hey, I gotta cancel, first off, do you cancel on your doctor, Grady? Do you ever, do you ever cancel an hour before on your doctor? Ever. No. Yeah. So have some respect for yourself. Don't don't cancel on me. Right. An hour beforehand, like treat it like a professional because you are one. If you're if you're acting like if you call them up and say, oh, well, I have to come out. They're going to they're either not going to answer or they're just going to hit you with the same thing. Oh, no. Sorry. We can't do it today. I'm just showing up now when I show up and Grady answers the door. Do I pretend like I um, didn't see his message? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I do. So if he answers the door, I'm like, okay, um, hey, so I'm here for the mortgage protection. We got that appointment between 10 and 11. Boom. He answers. He says, oh, you know, hey, I left you a message. Did you not get it? No, actually, I didn't get that. Um, I've actually got do not disturb on while driving just because obviously I've, I've got appointments every hour. Um, but with that being said, you have a kitchen table, look down at my shoes, start wiping, lean in. Like I'm not even, I'm not even going to deal with your objections. Now, if he says, well, dude, I really can't do it today. Well, got, you know, John, 
or Grady. <laughs> uh, I always use John in trainings. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> Grady. Um, Grady, you know, I totally understand, but I did just drive 50 minutes to get out here. All I need is about 10 to 15 minutes of your time. But if you don't mind, you have a kitchen table, right? Best home? Perfect. I start wiping shoes, shoes on, shoot off, shoes off. Like I'm just, I'm going, right? I'm just going. So um, if it's, if it's a, if it's for Zoom though, or like Telesell, then what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that um, my Calendly is set up and it's sending them invites like an hour before, six hours before, like I just want them to be very aware that it's gonna happen. And then guys, remember, they remember your number. So if they're gonna try and avoid you, they remember your, remember your number and they're not gonna, they're not gonna answer uh, for the virtual meeting, right? So I'll call them with like a Google voice number. I never call with my own. Um, when this is the callback to make sure that they answer and then I get them write on, that down right? that was that was worth the price of admission right there <laughs> that was good um, dude smart yeah, that's so, smart so man. It's just, dude you just got to get around these things you know you gotta you gotta adapt you gotta be adaptable not things are always gonna change right um, now with that as well if you are in the field and you're doing hybrid 10 by 1 if you do get no show 10 by 1 I call it 10 by 1 10 dials that means 10 families it doesn't mean 10 dials that's not working 10 families called three times in a row then door knock so 10 by one then repeat until your next appointment okay so that's what i'm doing um lastly actually i already covered that so in home but you, um, or you uh, over back the that phone. up go if ahead you get, if you're doing virtual and you get no showed mm -hmm. what was that what do you do 10 by one we break that i down do 10 by one so i do 10 10 dials of 10 different leads so that's 10 leads and i'm triple dialing right okay. because i want to try and make up for the activity that i would have been doing with the family instead i'm going to just get more appointments because again if we put more appointments in our favor dude this business isn't that complex let's just get some more appointments in our favor to make up for that one that no show you you see what i'm saying yeah. and it's going to happen you're going to get no shows there's no way around that okay um and then the one is one door knock so i will do 10 one door knock 10 one door knock make sense yeah i don't know what that is perfect um awesome so in home and on the phone so I'm going to really talk about telesell because I think that that's more important right now. Um, and it's all the same, like it's literally all the same. So the one difference on, and I'm going to talk about two things within in the in home. So when I am talking to someone on the phone and it's a telesell, it's a live transfer, or if it's a, you know, a lead that, you know, I'm calling to set up an appointment for a zoom meeting or something like that. Um, big thing that I am making sure of when I'm on that appointment, I have an intro before the intro. This is where people mess up and I get this all the time from agents. Hey, you know, I was, I was going through, um, you know, my intro or I went through the in home, I was to the end. And then, you know, I asked like the closing question and he hit me with, I want to think about it. And then he was like skeptical too, cause he didn't know if I was really legit, excuse me. Um, and then I showed him my license, but he still didn't want to do it. Guys, this business is about hitting the objections before they come. It's not hit them when you get them, because if you hit them when you get them, now you look like you're not confident in yourself. Now you look like the guy who's making up for the mistake he already made. You need to be hitting these things beforehand. So the intro before the intro means that you make sure that you show your license, you show, you know, you, you walk them through that process of going through the insurance department website and you get those things available for them. That way they know who you are before you even begin. Then from there, that's when you get into it. But I always want to tie, tie downs, tie downs, tie downs. If I go through that stuff, I'm like, Grady, you obviously see my license. I sent you a text message. Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. Awesome. Perfect. And um, did you also get that other message? It's got my uh, license number on it. Do you see that? Yeah, I see that now. Awesome. So as you can see, I'm sending you this just because Grady, I'm going to be honest, like, dude, I usually run from house to house. Like I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this because at the end of the day, I used to all last year, I was just in person. I never did this phone stuff. I never did zoom. Um, so, you know, I just want to say like, I want to make sure you really know who I am before I even begin. And anytime you do this type of stuff, you need to know who you're dealing with. So now I'm on his side. I'm not against him. You see what I'm saying? Now it's like, now I'm sitting on the side of the table with Grady. I'm on the other side looking at the paper with him instead of I'm looking at him and selling him. I'm just, here's, here's what we're doing. You see what I'm saying? So I want to set that from the beginning. Now, once I have that, then I go into my normal intro. And with, with in-home, 
Honestly, guys, it's all the same. So again, I'm not gonna say you need to be scripted. I'm actually bigger on bullet points because everyone has their own personality. I think you need to add your own personality or you'll sound like a robot and it will actually just hit you in the face. So I don't want you guys to fall down because you're trying to copy me. What I want you to do is make sure you're hitting these bullet points. Now those bullet points consist of, when I'm talking to Grady, basically the main thing I wanna talk about is how I'm a broker. I've got 45 companies that I work with. You know, Out of these 45, I'm just gonna find out which one of these is actually best fit for you. I'm not captive to one. I'm not gonna tell you why one's great. I'm literally just gonna find out who's best fit for you. So that is an icebreaker because now Grady feels like, oh, I'm, he's on my side. He's not sitting at the other end of the table selling the, the company that's on his t-shirt. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm trying to create. Now the other bullet point is I'm a field underwriter, right? Like I run from house to house. I do this all the time. The other bullet point, the last bullet point that I really want to make sure that you hit is that today is to get in the application. You've heard it in Grady's videos too. We all do it. You know, today, what my job today is to get in the application. So what we're going to do is get in the application to see if you can get approved, Grady, because honestly, Grady, we're not insuring the insurance company. The insurance company is insuring you, right? So it's not your first time getting insurance. We need to make sure that you actually get approved for this. Um, and then with that, they'll go through the, you know, your background and stuff like that. And then that's when that first premium will come out. That's when we'll get that coverage in effect. Does that make sense? Boom, like that's, that's it. And if I get a yes right there, guys, I'm already selling them in the first 10 minutes. I already know it's a close. Like a lot of you are finding out it's a close 30 minutes into the appointment. I'm not finding out, I'm finding out right at the beginning. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's really a crucial point um, as far as showing numbers. So this is the other thing I wanna talk about really quickly. How are we on time, Grady? you have all the time in the world bro keep rolling <laughs> okay okay so when it comes to showing numbers i think that agents get this mixed up all the time guys everyone has money like everyone has no money now are you going to run into the rare case that you know they're on social security and they have 900 bucks a month yes you are going to run into that sometimes now most people though when they say they don't have money they do it's just an icebreaker that they don't want you to walk through their wall right that's personal so with that being said you need to be on their side that's why i set it up like that but also don't be afraid to show numbers i think when i talk to new agents the most i hear all the time like dude how are you writing such big ap like, are you in a great area? Are you doing this? You know, best lead source, like this stuff? No, no, like every lead source, I get high AP. Now, how I do it is my mindset is in the place of, I'm showing value for them, it's not about me. And I think the agents always, the newer agents do this. Um, you get in your own way. And since I came from cable, I can relate back and be like, dude, people would walk in with into Walmart, their clothes are a mess, their family's a little bit messy, not being rude. I'm just like, it looks like chaotic, right? You, you can tell that there's not a lot of money that's there, but they're still signing up for a $300 cable plan. That's a two year contract, giving you their credit information, making sure that you know, you've got to do a credit check, you've got to put them in a contract, you've got to get their bank account information all right there in the store in front of everyone. Guys, you're doing that in their comfort or their own home and not even doing a credit check. You're not setting them up on a contract. And it's like, but in that store, here's the answer I get, $300 a month. At the end, it's like, okay, does that come with, I just wanna make sure, did that, did that come with sports channels? It's like, yes, John, you're spending $300 a month. You see what I'm saying? It's like, that's what they're worried about. So do you understand that that's tangible? It's something they can hold versus intangible. So the biggest thing that I can say is you gotta make it tangible and you also, have to show value. Now, a lot of you are afraid to show $300 a month, why? Because you're not willing to spend $300 a month on, on insurance. Now, is that selfish? We could have a talk another day about that. But what, <laughs> like, at the end of the day, like, the insurance is about them, it's not about you. You gotta get out of the way. You gotta get out of the way, let the client be the one that you're protecting, and I have no problem. If I, like, a lot of agents shaking their feet when they're showing 600, 500, 400, $300 a month, I don't care. I'm showing it because I'm doing what they told me to do when filling out that form. I'm there for them. You see what I'm saying? So you need to make sure you show value and you got to make it tangible. So if it's intangible, how do you make it tangible? Well, at the end, you talk about, again, the story that you brought up. Maybe you brought up a story throughout the filled you know, financial inventory. Maybe you brought up a story in the beginning, whatever. You bring up the story, but you make it real for them. Like John, at the end of the day, just like we talked about at the beginning, Beth, I mean, how does it feel to really just see that if something happened to John, I mean, at the beginning of this thing, 
what what was going to happen if something happened to John yesterday? Well, just like I said, I mean, you know, I would be I would be without a home or, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to afford his burial or whatever. Exactly. So how does it feel that that's actually taken care of? That actually does feel pretty good. Like, I mean, it's like now now I don't have to worry about that. Exactly. Like that's worth all the money in the world because at the end of the day, when you deal with this stuff, do you want to be worried about money? No. Okay. Well, let's just make sure it's provide. Let's make sure this protection is in place to make sure that you don't have to worry about that moving forward. Okay. Um, and again, you know, Beth, I'm your guy, John, I'm your guy. Like I'm going to be here for you. I got a bat for everyone I'm with. Like I'm going to take care of you guys. So if you have any questions, concerns ever, I'm always here for you. Okay. So I'm just, I want to make it real. I want to make it tangible, but the value has to be shown. Why is because I'm showing the value. And then you ask, well, do those people cancel? I have a 92% retention rate. So obviously people are holding. What am I doing different? Well, they understand the value versus, Someone who walks in, sells and walks away and never ex explain value. That's all it is. See what I'm saying? So um, guys, it's really just a transfer of emotion. That's all this business is. Um, and I think the biggest thing for me when I was a new agent coming into this thing, I came from hype sales. Hype sales is totally different. This is emotional, not hype. Don't talk about why it's the greatest insurance company in the world. No one cares. No one cares. All they want to know is that their family's taken care of when something happens. So make it emotional, make it so that they can connect to something. They don't care about the company having A plus ratings. That just doesn't matter. They don't care that it's the cheapest. Even though they say they do, they don't care. All they want to know is the job's done. Zach, I, I'm in, in my jaws on the floor, yet it's still attached to my face. So <laughs> that was so specific. Um, it's, a, it's a testament to your craft. It's a testament to thousands of sales where you did make a sale and maybe you were more excited and then the business fell off the books because they called you two days later and said we met with someone else and just i think mm. we're gonna go with them we connected with them more right yep. and then you just start to go well how could they have connected with them more i gave them all the value and i showed them all the brochures and i had a card and everything matched and i had my americo shirt on and then all of a sudden you start to figure out as you progress within this business that it's far more about making that emotional feel uh, stick because that's what you remember. I mean, the, the, that's what they say big and, uh, you know, monetary and, and physical things that we buy in life are far less memorable than like the, the actual experiences that we can have with ourselves and with our friends and with our family, right? That emotional attachment you have to a moment will linger with you exactly. far longer than buying something, buying a nice watch or a car or something like that. So that's that same personal experience that we have is what you harvest inside of clients. Uh, and now, is it always on the phone or is it Zoom phone? Do you do do you have a preference? Zoom phone in home. Now, do I have a preference out of all of them? I, yes. I love the phone because it's so short. You know, it's like Got thirty-five it. minutes versus you know hour, hour and a half. Like it's just it's short. That's why I like telesales, but I like it all. Um, but I would just say I like the phone because you can shorten the amount of. Um, time it's gonna take so you can actually run more appointments. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, one thing I wanna to add to what you were saying, when you say, um, you know, as far as like uh, cancellations and, and uh, you know, showing the value and stuff like that, like, or making it normal, right? Um, I, I mentioned this at the beginning, like for me, writing to, to a lot of you, like if you sell that first policy and you're so excited, you're on this high, right? But life has a way of balancing stuff out. So all I can say is if you're on a high, know that you're going to hit one day, you're going to have a bunch of no shows and you're going to go low. But if you keep it level and not worry so much about that stuff and just keep going, that stuff doesn't matter. anymore. So it's like you got to start setting even with the small things. You make a commitment, show up. You make a commitment to come to Grady's call, you show up. You make a commitment to come to mine, you show up. Like if you want to be paid like a professional, act like, act like one. That's the biggest that's the biggest setback for a lot of these people. They want to get paid like a professional until it comes time to act like one. That's the difference. Zach, there's so much truth to your words. You're wise beyond your years. How old are you by the way? Just so everyone uh, <laughs> I'm 23. 23 years old. But been been in this been, but you've been you faced more no's and more adversity than most people at 43. You put yourself right. in a position to struggle and to get stressed and to get told no and to build that rhino skin that now puts you in a position where you have the confidence in yourself, in your skills, and now the now the knowledge from selling enough to know that it's far more about emotional value connection than it is about A plus ratings and the name of the company. I just love that that exactly. part of it. So um, to put 
to put pen to paper in the same sense, and I know what your goals are, you're going to knock a Hall of Fame easily, but your bigger goals are building an agency, and, and we can all tell and we can all test, and please, um, you know, the, the, the comments will back me up, but your, your communicative skill set is one of a, a board member, you know, be, and beyond. So what is your goal, since you like to make goals, and, and you tell me, you'll tell a few of our friends on here, and we'll make sure we tell Wyatt, what's your goal to get to board member? Board member will be, I actually told Sean, which I'm going to hold to, that Integrity Partnership board member by November 2022. And we've got everything going in our favor, just got to keep it going. Um, I made a lot of mistakes um, within this last year, a lot of mistakes um, on the team building side. Like I just, you know, I think that's how it is hey, with everything. You, you right? got him out of the way. Downs. You got exactly. him out of the way. Just for that without mistakes. Yeah, we've all made mistakes. So we're exactly, all <laughs> exactly. And now you know I know the differences between those mistakes and moving forward. So um, at the end of the day, now it's just like I need to just put it all to action, and we'll we'll hit it. Awakening is uh, that's the whole point of awakening, right? I chose awakening because really I wanted to show people that at the end of the day, you don't need to be through you know you you don't need to go through societal societal's norm to become successful. You just don't. It, like that's an old old concept, old way of thinking. Um, you know, the people that used to tell, tell me I need to go to college, you're not going to be worth anything. Now they're looking to me and being like, what the heck did you do? Um, your haters become your fans eventually. So just remember that. That's so true, man. And I do love it. I think board member by November, I love it. And I do think you'd make a fantastic partner and you'd beat out Tordowski and be the youngest partner that at whatever exist with the integrity and I'm all about beating up Tordowski because he's a huge dude and I can't ever beat him up so we got to beat him up somehow <laughs> exactly. and so emotionally <laughs> that's right oh and that'd be Zach, Zach and Zach that'd be two Zachs so that yep. and then Egan Egan may figure it out too they'll have three integrity FFL partner Zachs so um perfect Zach, I appreciate you. The team appreciates. Please drop a thank you, a TY, a fire emoji, an eye emoji for awakening. It, some sort of, of, a, of a, a thumb-induced appreciation to Zach for all he shared. This, this was a clinic on mindset and skill set. And one of the things you said, and I, I, I'd heard early on in my career, is the most powerful words in the world are the ones we say to ourselves. And you hit on that for such a good chunking per period of time that the people here who are starting with us need to realize that if you speak if you speak negative into yourself and into your business, it's not going to yield positive results. And you continue to speak positive and believe in yourself and talk right. I'm going to be a Hall of Fame producer and I'm going to recruit the next five agents and I'm going to build my business. And I'm going to protect this family and I'm going to book up 20 appointments a day. You say those things and repeat it over and over and over again. Your body just like you've talked about goes well i guess i have to do this i keep getting told the same thing over and over so spelling man spelling you're casting spells Remember i love that? it zach zach thank you so much appreciate you brother board member and beyond next year and we'll see you in uh we'll see you in miami my man appreciate you awesome have a great day, everybody see you soon have thank a good you one. all bye for now